So, let me ask you this. What happens when a major U.S. city runs out of clean water? Think about that for a second. Imagine a city out of water. We are live outside of a Kroger store where half a million people stores scrambling to stores mentioned. only to realize that there's none anywhere. The water and you should not what now? In the water also do not News stations report on areas where water is still in stock, but the radius of the damage continues to expand hour by hour. How far must you go to find your supply of water in a crisis that seems to have no end? When the water becomes toxic, it becomes useless. In 2014, a harmful algal bloom caused the first major U.S. city water ban in Toledo, Ohio. For days, nearly 400,000 residents were cut off from a source of clean water. Now, when summer comes, we are left with a fear of toxic algal blooms, but above all, uncertainty. Reactionary approaches can only help so much, but how can the root of the problem ultimately be addressed? To understand the larger issue, we first have to understand its cause, and that is an aquatic, microscopic bacteria called Microcystis aeruginosa. To be more precise, Microcystis aeruginosa is actually categorized as a cyanobacteria because of its ability to undergo photosynthesis. Now, photosynthetic organisms have the ability to make food for themselves using sunlight. These tiny organisms are only a few microns in diameter. Now, to put that into perspective, that's less than one-tenth the size of a human hair. And yet it produces a toxin called microcystin that leads to liver damage and is hazardous to human health. Given an environment with available nutrients, warm temperatures, and shallow waters, such as the western basin of Lake Erie, a small cluster of cyanobacteria can form into a large colony and eventually a huge problem. When cyanobacteria decompose, they create dead zones in the water, or hypoxic areas as they are formally referred. Hypoxic areas are areas with low concentrations of oxygen. Marine life cannot be sustained in these areas and many species often die out. But also, toxins and other compounds are released into the water causing health concerns for people. Ironically enough, they were the founding organisms that formed our oxygen-rich atmosphere. Their legacy stretches billions of years back to an event called the Oxygen Catastrophe. In a time when the Earth's atmosphere was devoid of oxygen gas, the introduction of a photosynthetic, oxygen-producing organism greatly altered the development and path of the Earth and its atmosphere. This organism increased the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere, resulting in a mass extinction of many existing species. But interestingly, this exact same process also prepared the Earth for the growth and survival of new organisms that needed oxygen to live, such as you and me. The presence of cyanobacteria has also had a great impact on the development of other organisms. For example, the photosynthetic part of plant cells, known as chloroplasts, are the result of an endosymbiotic relationship between cyanobacteria and an ancestor of today's plants. Now to explain, in endosymbiosis, one organism actually lives within another in such a way that is mutually beneficial. Surprisingly, cyanobacteria and other photosynthetic aquatic organisms have been estimated to produce as much as 70 to 80 percent of all the oxygen that we breathe. The problem arises when the natural ecology is disrupted and cyanobacteria are allowed to thrive uncontrollably. Although cyanobacteria are a vital part of our global ecosystem, many factors contribute to their sudden rise as a nuisance and menace to society. These factors include warmer water temperatures and the oversaturation of water systems with nutrients. So what innovative solutions are being developed to deal with these severe cyanobacterial blooms? Nutrient management plans help farmers in reducing the amount of fertilizer that drains into rivers and streams. This in turn reduces the available nutrients. Engineers are also leveraging existing technology such as ultrasound, and utilizing safe chemical and biological approaches to manage cyanobacterial growth. Cyanobacteria have been on this earth for far longer than mankind has existed. It's because of these organisms that we have oxygen to breathe. 
But today, an imbalance of the ecosystem is causing them to once again threaten the systems that have shaped and continue to shape life on Earth. Now, it is up to us to properly address this ongoing issue for the future and sustainability of our biosphere. Join MidStory as we continue to uncover the science and significance behind events that affect our everyday lives. You can find other interesting stories and articles at midstory.org.